Hello, Unity developers. Welcome to part three on making a multiplayer card game in Unity using the Socket Weaver SDK. And today we are going to make the multiplayer game thing for the multiplayer gameplay, and we will allow the players to connect to the game servers. Let's get started. At first, I'm going to duplicate the offline game thing, and the new thing will be named multiplayer game thing. The multiplayer game thing will serve for the multiplayer gameplay, and after that, I'm going to create a subclass of the game class. I will name it multiplayer game. In the new class, I'm going to override the implementation to support multiplayer in our game. We don't want to make the changes directly to the game class because we want to keep the offline logic intact. And let's open the multiplayer game thing. I'm going to replace the game script with the multiplayer game script we just created. I'm just going to copy all the settings to the new multiplayer game component. It looks like the game still works, and that's good. I'm going to add the multiplayer game thing to the build settings so that the Unity Scene Manager can load it. After that, I'm going to modify the lobby script. I want the players to load the multiplayer game thing when they are ready to play together. I'm going to start a room when the start button is clicked, and inside of the new method, I'm just going to copy the example code from the Socket Weaver documentation site. The lobby start method tells Socket Weaver that the players in the room are ready to play, and Socket Weaver will find a suitable game server for the players. I'm going to add an event handler for the on room ready event. The on room ready event is invoked. When Socket Weaver has found a game server and the game server is ready to connect, so in the event handler, I'm going to connect to the game servers of the room, and I'm going to use connect to room of the network client instance, and in the callback. If we are connected to the game server, I'm going to ask the Unity Scene Manager to load the multiplayer game thing, and let's build the game to check if everything works as we expected. And looking good, both the game client and the Unity editor loaded the multiplayer game thing. But at this moment, they are two completely different games, and the game is not aware of who is the local player or who is the remote player. So let's take a look at the script. In the game class, the the local player and the remote player. Are initialized in the awake method, so we can override it in the multiplayer game class. The new keyword is used to hide the implementation in the game class. We still want to keep the base logic because the local player and the remote players are initialized in the base logic. I'm going to get the players in the room using the lobby get players in room method. So for the callback, I'm going to loop through all the players in the room. We should get two players, and that's the 
room player limit we set in the lobby script. And I'm going to get the player name from the custom string of the player. And I will get the player ID from the Socket Weaver player data model. If the player ID equals to the player ID of the network client instance, I will set it to the local player. And if they are not equal, I will set it to the remote player. And I'm going to initialize the game data manager using the players. Because the player IDs are part of the protected data of the game. And let's build the game to test if everything works. So the multiplayer game thing is loaded. Let's take a look at the multiplayer game component. And we can see that the player's names are set correctly. In the next video, we are going to continue working on the multiplayer game thing. We will shuffle and deal cards to the players, and at the same time, we will keep the player's cards in sync. And thank you for watching. I will see you around.